Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about Invest Like Rudy. So I'll tell you a story. And the story is about Star City Games. Uh, Star City Games had writers promoting a certain card. Uh, this does happen often, so this is a repeated action. And then the buy list on that card goes down. And their inventory is very high. So although they are saying, and the writers are saying this card is amazing, the financial implications on the back end is, no, we need to sell this card right now. We can kind of tell something that's going on in the back end with Rudy. So Rudy is buying a lot of collections. You see the Arabian Nights, 100 complete collections of Arabian Nights, uh, another collection with a hidden fake dual land, he is buying a lot of collections, a magic collection from Norway with reserve list cards, and he's selling boxes, new boxes. Now, his prices are relatively fair. Um, sometimes Dave and Adams gets him by about 5 or $10 with coupons, but it's close. It's not like your, your local game star who needs to sell it for 100 right? At the very end, core component he is buying ferociously old cards and that's what you need to be doing so you don't want to be the person buying new boxes at 80 you want to be the person buying these collections and uh, there's nothing but blue skies ahead for these reserve list cards um, i don't see them ever going down in price i own a bunch myself and i'm a case i'm always surprised when a random mirage card like Torin's Etic, it's like two cents, and now it's two dollars on buy list. And I look at it and I say, "Yeah, this card is uh, unique, but in no way, because in the last twenty years the card has not been good, or the last fifteen years no one has thought the card was good, but now apparently it is good." So let's take um, another look at. Uh, so, so he's selling boxes, new boxes, proof, Masters 25, Masters 25 failed, Masters 25 box openings, S investing in new magic boxes returns. I'm almost certain that he's not investing in magic boxes, uh, especially magic boxes of standard sets. You can get them online for under under distribution distribution being 76 i see them all the time um a very good example of this was a for revolt was recently at 72 which seems pretty good and then you hit it with a 20 dollars discount after you buy 250 so what is that so that's like what's that two dollars for every 25 dollars so let's say another six dollars so you're, you're getting it under 60 no problem uh, sorry you're getting under 70 no problem so when you look at what he's selling and what he's buying, pay attention to what he's buying. Same principle with um, Channel Fireball, Star City, all these people. Look at what they're buying. Look at their buy list. Don't look at their sales. When they have a sales, it seems really good. They send you an email. It's very hyped. They do some Facebook ads, I guess. But that's not relevant to MTG Finance. It's not relevant for long term. See what they're buying. And you know what's ticking up in price? Reserve list cards. And you know what will never tick up in price? These boxes. I, I know a lot of you will say, hey, I buy boxes too, right? Like I buy boxes too. I don't buy them at the prices people are saying that people are buying them like $100, but maybe I'm just a really good shopper, right? Not. <laughs> anyway, you... If you actually want to, quote, invest in this money or have cards like Turret Lands Etic, which is absolutely bulk. I have 200 of them. They went from the definition of bulk. I didn't even know it was a rare until recently. And Mirage to, what's it, 2 to $4 now? I mean, even if I can't get $4 for it, I should at least be able to get one, right? And I can because it's a $4 card. Anyone's going to trade it for a dollar that's pretty pretty common sense right so let's see eternal masters weiss um Perserno five strains there was of coast challenger deck equal accepted 
Scars of Meriden, uh, $150,000 of old cards, a vintage card, Bizarre Baghdad, more Bizarre Baghdad, which was bought out. Uh, let's buy a beta collection. So pay attention to what he's buying and then pay attention to what he's selling. And if you, Rudy's a very smart individual. You want to mimic you want to mimic what he's doing, not what he's saying, right? So when you need to sell something, you got to say good stuff about it, right? I don't need to sell you Elmer Cat, so I said all types of trash on Elmer, Elmer Cat. Master 25, I didn't sell a single box of this. So I didn't open a single box, so I can trash it as much as I want. Now, reserve list cards, I am buying. And I can tell you there's still many large collections out there where there's a gap of there's this gap of knowledge. So you know old cards are valuable, but there's no way you can predict that this edict from Miraz that no one played with, that no one probably even knows is a rare, is $4 now. And when you hit a collection with it, you're going to hit a collection with several hundred of them. And because, again, these stores just put them away. No one would buy them. No one would buy them. It, these are cards on a reserve list um, and part of this collection. So when we talk about bazaars of Baghdads and all that stuff is semi-interesting, but I'm really interested in a bulk, um, especially from Miraz and Odor. Urza Saga, Urza Legacy is interesting, but I'd much rather have Miraz and Odor. Now, would I love Alpha Beta Unlimited? Uh, Legends and Arabian, that has all dried up. But there's still this big chunk of Magic players and way more than this, way more people and way more cards were printed in Miraz than Alpha or Beta, right? So we can kind of kiss those sets goodbye because everyone knows the value of those sets. But from Miraz, people have hundreds of thousands of these cards and these, quote, bulk cards are just sitting there. And every so often, one of them becomes $5. And this pirate's now $6. And they are stabilizing. What I wanted to figure out was very simple. Do these cards stabilize? As soon as I, te as soon as I found out they do stabilize, and that pirate dude is still 5 6 bucks, and he didn't go down to uh, $0.05, cents, I said, now that is interesting. And I'm all... So... I'm not going to BS you because there's no reason. I'm not here to sell you boxes. I'm not here you know, to sell you any of the stuff. Um, I'm here to more like you guys. I'm kind of a buyer. Um, I'm more of a buyer than a seller. And I'm buying into reserve lists and older collections, especially bulk older collections because all you need to do is hit one edict and you hit 100 copies of it. I don't know what you paid for the collection, but you are in the profit. And that's one card. You get some pirates, that's some more money. I mean, it is so fascinating um, how, how these cards that I played with that no one wanted. No one wanted these cards. They were never, before today and before last week, the edict, I look at it and I still look at it and it's still baffling to me this is a $4 card. It's bad. It's really bad. But other cards on the reserve list, which you do know are very good, they have been increasing in price, and I don't see them stopping ever because Magic will meet... I think Magic's popularity will increase in time, and everything else is, has decreased in value. If you have standard sets and they're no longer valuable because of a Hazret reprint, Chandra reprint, all Fatal Push reprint, although there's only one copy, it's still a reprint, you're still going to, uh, uh, what's it called? The new lands or the check lands, right? So they've been reprinted from Innistrad. You are still talking about a large majority of players never having old cards. And there's not that many of them to go around. So when these new players decide, hey, I would like some Arabian Nights, gone. It's all gone. But there's still Mirage left. It will take a lot of time to soak up a Mirage, just given the sheer volume of that set. So I like it. 
Um, I don't want to fight for the betas and alphas, and that's not. It's I'm not going to bid up the price on that. I think the prices are, are relatively high. Not that they aren't good buys; they are still very solid buys. But I would much rather have higher margins. I'd ra rather pick up a card for five cents and then have it jump to four dollars. That's what I like, because when you pick up that card that's five cents, you're not picking up one or two of them. So if you pick up a card that's five hundred dollars and goes to six hundred dollars, that's really good. That is really, really good. But I would much rather have uh, 100 five cent cards go up to, what's that? Some insane amount of money and then be able to buy list them off. And you know, for collection purpose, should I not buy list them, they just look more impressive than one card. And my Mirage collection, as you guys have probably seen in the past, is looking very good right now. Anyway, bye guys.